In just a mo, I'll give you a brief explanation behind each answer, linking the vocabulary or contextual links between the text and the question. I'll be going through the answers quickly, so make sure your course book is open in front of you, and please stop and rewind the video as you need to, to take the time to find the vocabulary and contextual links that I'll be talking about. Ready? Then let's go. For question one, the answer is C, as C mentions a pragmatic advantage of having shared sleeping arrangements. As the pragmatic advantage refers to the end of C, which explains the advantage as being one of safety in light of threat or emergency. For question two, the answer is E, mentions beliefs about potential risks of too deep a sleep. As the beliefs mentioned in question 2 refer to the beginning clauses of E about a person's spirit wandering off if too heavy a sleep was had. For question 3, the answer is A mentions a widespread assumption that sleeping routines are universal. As the widespread assumption regarding universal sleeping patterns can be seen right at the end of A where it says sleep is treated as a biological given with little potential for variation from one part of the world to another. For question four, the answer is B mentions an awareness that scientific research methods may be flawed. As the flaw mentioned in the question text can be seen at the end of B where it says that sleep styles of non-Western groups may shape the biology of sleep in ways undreamed of in sleep labs. In other words, not thought about or considered, hence the flaw. For question five, the answer is C, mentions a re-evaluation of ideas about what represents typical sleeping environments. As the re-evaluation of ideas regarding sleeping environments is seen in C, where it says, she says it brought it home to her, just how odd the Western concept is of layers of bedding, dot, 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 and so on, is. The oddness of the Western concept presumably is causing her to reevaluate typical sleeping environments. For question six, the answer is E mentions the ability to fall asleep as a method of self-protection, as this is covered in the middle of E when talking about fear sleep, when confronting intense anxiety or unexpected fright. For question 7, the answer is B, mentions investigations currently being carried out into the science of sleep, as these investigations regarding the science of sleep are touched upon halfway down text B, where it says, current efforts of scientists are examining genes involved in wakefulness and sleeping and further about treating sleep disturbances. For question 8, the answer is D, mentions the link between darkness and periods of sleep, as this link is met in D close to the beginning of the text when talking about worlds without artificial light and the resulting relationship with activity and time allotted to sleep. For question 9, the answer is A, mentions a lack of research into sleeping customs across cultures, as the lack of research is referred to towards the end of A when stating that sleep scarcely figures in the literature of cross-cultural differences or evolution. For question 10, the answer is D, mentions different cultural attitudes to irregular sleep patterns, as these are seen in text D, halfway down the text, where it says, Variable sleep patterns, that is irregular sleep patterns, among individuals and age groups are useful. And then this is compared to irregular sleep pattern of teenagers, which is, rightly in my opinion, seen as problematic.